Hey guys, welcome to a quick spoiler talk for Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. So the first thing I wanted to talk about was Yondu's relationship with Star-Lord. I think it was great the way they expanded upon it and really went into how he was, you know, Star-Lord's father figure and how he raised him and everything. And his sacrifice at the end was just amazing. I, you know, you get the feel so much from that. And that is because, you know, take notes on this one, DC. When you write characters that you actually care about, you actually care when these characters die. We didn't get that way with Superman and Batman v Superman, but that's for a whole nother video. But anyway, I thought that this was great. I love the way they did this ending with him, uh, you know, sacrificing himself to save Star-Lord. I absolutely loved it. It added a little bit of maturity to, I think, these otherwise goofy movies, and I absolutely loved it. I think the performances with that scene was great. It was just, you know, amazing. Also, Star-Lord's relationship with Ego was great. You know, that's his real father, and that provided a real, you know, it provided a great storyline between Star-Lord, Ego, and uh, Yondu. I think it was just great the way they did that. Seeing Star-Lord and, you know, Ego interact, they had great chemistry. You know, father and son, I think that they did that amazingly. And, you know, the reveal, oh, you know, of Ego being the bad guy was just, it was great. The way they did the whole thing was just perfect. And Ego being Star-Lord's father, I thought, was just a, done very well. Also, I want to talk about the Watchers cameo really quickly. Now, for those of you who don't know, the Watchers are like the ones that, like, they see everything in the entire Marvel Universe. They kind of, like, make sure that, like, nothing, like, goes, like, array. That, like, everything, like, the, the balance is kept. That, like, there's nothing, you know, that some supervillain's not going to go and, you know, tap into some, like, you know, ungodly, like, power and end up, like, you know, ripping the fabric of space and time apart. They're the ones who make sure that doesn't happen. And... Fun fact, they are owned by Fox because I think they technically are Fantastic Four characters. So it is interesting to see that. And I guarantee you that the deal was that if Marvel can, that Marvel said you can make a, you know, Cable Thanos joke since Josh Brolin's playing Cable in the Deadpool movies if we get to use uh, the Watcher. So it was great to see them in the universe. I guarantee you that they will be showing up in the Inhumans miniseries, which would be really great. And, you know, it's just nice to see them. You know, I've always wondered what they do with them on screen. The CGI for them wasn't that great. They look pretty cartoonish. But at the same time, it was nice to actually see them in there. So, well, it's, it's going to be interesting to see what they do in the MCU with the Watchers. Yeah, I just wanted to talk about that. Anyway, that's it for spoilers. I just wanted to, you know spout off a cute few things I didn't want to talk about in the to see or not to see review so anyway that's it for me as always if you like what you see go ahead and hit subscribe you can follow me on Facebook and Twitter the links are in the description below also be sure to check out my website and remember I waste my money so you don't have to thanks for watching